What's up, everybody? Yeah, it's good to see you guys, and uh, even better be out here on some good weather and uh, getting going. So, as we're entering into OTA five, um, we've really been impressing on like the speed and the execution. I think you heard us talk uh, last week about as a passing camp and the details that go into that. So, offensively, defensively, the whole the whole part of it. Uh, we'll actually work in some special teams today that involve some kickoff coverage, some kickoff return. So, we're excited to put part of that into play as well. So, it's a fun day to, to get rocking. So, with that, I'll open up to you guys. At the left tackle spot, you got Cornelius, you got Brandon Coleman competing. As you get deeper and deeper into your installs and everything, what are you looking from them specifically as they compete? Yeah, I think number one, um, like you're right, that the competition is at a lot of spots. And at that position specifically, it's going to take more time. And the reason being is you've seen where we haven't done a lot of team together, we haven't done in padded spots together. So we're going to be really strategic as it gets to training camp. and. Uh, you know, finding markers and moments to say, okay, you get the first reps today, next one you get the first reps, and we'll take that process uh, through the preseason. And through that process, uh, it'll emerge. Uh, but what we're looking for mainly is just, you know, the execution, honestly, of the offense. You brought in some guys um, like Wagner, Ertz, Eckler, and all that, in addition to feel they can play, but the leadership aspect. So what kind of little things have you seen already where their leadership has maybe impacted others? Um, you may have seen like a little bit of time before practice or post practice. We call that um, like that's their time to that they work on to get better. And you'll see Zach working through a specific route. You may see Wags, you know, pulling somebody to the side and discussing a, a coverage or a concept to go. And so I'd say those are the small markers. And then off the field, um, if you'd ask one of those guys, take me through your process. And I think for a younger player, that's a big deal for them coming into the NFL to make sure. It may not be exactly what Bobby done or what Zach has done or others, but there is a process that they follow. And that's a really important role for somebody just entering in. We're going to be playing football for a long time. And so make sure this is how I warm up. This is how I do things to take care of my body. This is how I study. And so those processes are, are really important. Do you already see some of those younger guys heeding what they're seeing and learning? Yes. And uh, like, what a value for some of the players at their positions to come in. And you, know, you found out early on, you know, and I'd asked, uh, you know, Ben, have you met Zach? Yeah, he already reached out to me. And so knowing they were already ahead of them before they even got here, um, that's what leadership is all about. Lou McCaffrey's college coach says he's really hard on himself. He makes mistakes in games and practice. How do you kind of coach a guy like Luke, who's kind of student of the games, son and a brother of a player, to kind of move on with things and, and not be such a perfectionist? Yeah, I think that's uh, that's true for all really good competitors. Oh, if I could just have that one play, it's true for coaches, honestly, as well. So really, it's about getting to the next play and knowing that, all right, whatever just happened, I have to take that information and move on to the next one. So finding those spaces when something didn't go quite right uh, and moving on to the next play quickly, like that's a really important skill. What we do know is that like there's going to be adversity that's coming. And when you have the mindset knowing, bring it on. I know this is coming. I'm ready for that. Then you're ready to transition more quickly. You guys have games Thursday and whatever. I know you coach on games various days of the week. NFL is going to Friday and Tuesday. What do you make of that? How, how hard are that? Is, how do a challenge is that for teams and coaches when you have games on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, all that? I think we were talking about routine earlier and knowing that uh, you'd like to set everything up, you know, where I have a game. This is what I do on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, on Saturday. And so when those games come, you'd really just shift. This would be like a Wednesday. This would be like a Friday. This is what we do before the game. So it's not as difficult um, as it seems. You know, you have some travel that you have to work in, shorter weeks, longer weeks. But again, staying true to a process. This is how we get ready. Um, that's, that's, to me, the biggest piece of it. On sort of that leadership front with a guy like Wagner, who you've obviously known, what specifically does he, does he do? Is it more of a lead by example? Is he a talking guy? What is it he kind of does that helps? I'd say probably a little bit of both. And what you'll find from him is like this is a rare competitor. I remember, um, you know, going on 10 years now or longer, me filming an install. Um, so, you know, as coaches, sometimes you film to see, you know, how did I teach and how did it go? And I can remember that day specifically, it might have been the first day of an OTA. I had filmed it and went back home that night to watch it. And I was so pissed at myself because I didn't ask specific people the questions. In other words, Ben, what is this? And John, what is this? And so I'd ask questions and like Bobby Wagner and Earl Thomas answered like every question, you know, as it come up, they just had that type of intensity about them. So I would say he is both. Um, pull somebody to the side to discuss it, think about it in this way, but um, he does it in his own way as a leader. And that's what I want he and Zach and others that are here to make sure they're, they're here as ball players first, but 
when you look back on it, um, some of the people that mentored him, now that's a way to pay it forward. And so that's one of the coolest parts of our game is when now you get to pass that along to the next one. And the very best players do that. And uh, I look back and was fortunate to, you know, coach guys like a Bryant Young or a Jason Taylor and, you know, others that have made the Hall of Fame. But there was this common trait of sharing that knowledge to the next. And I thought that was always one of the cool parts of like the great players that were willing to pass it on to the next guy. And uh, with Emmanuel Forbes, just curious about his progress, but also you guys had him doing some punt returns last week. Just kind of curious, do you see that as possibly part of his future? Well, I think right off the bat, uh, we know there's more return opportunities. And so Emmanuel's got, you know, ridiculous return skills as a defensive player of returning. So we wanted to add that part of it. Although he didn't do it at Mississippi State, that doesn't mean he doesn't have the, the traits necessary. So we got a big, deep crew now that we're working people both in punt return and in kick return. And so... Just like everything, we're trying to you know, find out what unique things a player has and how to feature them. That not only will be during this time of year, can he be a punt returner? Can a safety come down to play dime? Can a tight end split out wide? Those are things that it takes time through training camp. One player may be able to, another player may not. And so it does take a little bit of exploring, but that's like our job as coaches to find any unique traits that the players have and then how would we feature those unique traits and trying to find the things that people can do versus the things that they can't do. How is Jaden progressing? You know, as we're getting started, like it's a big passing camp. So for the quarterbacks, they're getting um, some really good looks. You know, there's a number of coverages now that have gone in, you know, from the first day of where it was maybe just three deep and man to man. So to see that type of progress from he and from the other quarterbacks, I think that's good. In weeks ahead, we'll add team things to it and blitzes and, you know, a, a pocket and that kind of stuff. But I think what jumps not only off the tape here, what you guys don't see in the meeting room is just the competitive nature and the learning and the command that he has already. And so that's something that speaks to his work ethic. When you're a head coach and there's a lot of things on your plate, how much time, energy do you spend monitoring Jaden, checking in with his coaches, you know, making sure that he's on that development curve that you guys would like? Yeah, and it's for everybody, really, not just Jaden, but to make sure, and I get, you know, the reason behind it, but each of the guys, what can they do? How are they making progress? So we debrief. Um, pretty much every day on a practice day, not so much on the non-practice days, and then featuring what other types of things do we need to add to it. So you may see post-practice, they're working one thing today and something different tomorrow. So you're always kind of tweaking and building that. Um, and that's just what how we do it at all, all the spots. Sorry to hammer the uh, leadership thing, but no, you it's guys one of my coaches, favorite topics, so bring it. <laughs> you guys as coaches can lead the way that you do and set the tone and culture and all those different things. How important is it to have locker room leaders and what can that do for a team having kind of those veterans who can who can stand up in a locker room and, and say what needs to be said? Yeah, the very best teams I've been a part of were really strong in the locker room first. And those standards that they create together, to me, that's where like the gold is. And so having ways to hold each other account accountable, to push one another, to challenge one another. And that's what really being a great teammate is all about. Sometimes you're the mentor, sometimes you're the mentee. And it doesn't have to be young to old always either. It's, you know, like we were talking about earlier, a player now going to, you know, do some punt returning. Well, Crowder's a great person to talk to about that if you've not done a lot of punt returns or kick returns. So finding these little spaces to lead one another, push one another, sometimes it's in the weight room. You know, to say, come on, this is a guy who brings that energy into that. Sometimes you'll see it on the field. So it's not one person that has to continuously lead in every way. That's what, if no one's leading in that space, that's, that's a real cue. It's your time to stand up. At this point in the calendar, how much are you paying attention to kind of organizing the depth chart and building chemistry amongst groups of players versus just having guys learn the offense, learn the defense, learn what they're supposed to be doing? And then how does that prioritization shift as you move through the spring and into the summer? Yeah, so it's a, if you look, you know, big picture wise, there's certain parts of our identity that we'll be able to hit now. The speed, the execution of finishing plays downfield, um, the defense, the way they break, the way they run to the ball, like that's an identity part that's we're putting together and I'm seeing, you know, signs of that moving forward. The things that we don't get to see right now are the physical parts of it. Like that's not what this time is for. So what areas and knowing what to compete at at that time. So in this time, it's 
competing man, can I learn these details and can I really go execute really quickly communication? So not as much of the evaluation as it is the learning to go, but I do want to see that speed and uh, see the guys communicate and the chemistry that goes. But as far as the depth chart is, not really right now. That's not part of it. We want to get as many guys, as much reps as we can, and then as we get into camp, then we'll be able to start building that as we go, which would include the preseason games. You've got, you've got, the, two more. You've got officials out there today. Uh, wait. I know they do the training camp visit, but what do you like about involving them? Yeah, and we're going to try to do it for every practice. And uh, officials at practice also mean that we now have the ability to, to really put ourselves in situations. So you'll see some two-minute today. But as important as that, this was an ICT. This is why they threw it. This is why they called you know, offensive pass interference. Whatever that may have been of training the guys on what good looks like, that's a really important part of it. And so... We don't want to create bad habits, so having the officials here is a nice check system. Uh, Dan, training camp's right around the corner. Curious about your philosophy with joint practices and if you have any joint practices that you know of that you can announce or, or uh, to that nature. Yeah, so right now we have um, one joint practice scheduled with Miami, and so that will be there and we'll work with them for a day and then have our game. And uh, we're also, we'll discuss that, you know, with the, you know, some other teams as we're going in to see if everything logistics wise can line up. But there's value in it to say, just seeing other looks and people and formations and speed. And so uh, there's real value to, to doing it. And so if we can, we will. Jake, last one. We see them out here. The viewers will see them out here. What's the expectation from the players as far as the schedule goes throughout the week? What are they going through? So in the uh, early part of the day, um, meetings and workouts. And so in the strength and conditioning side, different things on different days. And then we go a portion inside where we work a lot of team and go through blitzes and run game to that. And then outside, we really work like there's a long piece on our skill development. And so as you're going through it, Chick, that's like that's what this time of year is about, skills and skills. And if you keep working those skills hard, then you'll be able to trust those skills when you put it into the certain plays and the certain things. So, for instance, a defensive player may have a certain coverage or a certain way that he has to play. You work that skill for this specific coverage, and then we play it today. Offensively, there's a certain route that may go in. This is the extreme detail for that route, the movement, and that's how you keep working the skills, and then you put it into the whole play. So it's think of uh, crawl, walk, run. And so the crawl part is the classroom, honestly. This is how you install a play. We like to jog through them at you know 50%. And then when we get out to here, we really am looking to see, is there a hesitation? Or are they attacking it with the full speed mentality? So if you follow that process over and over and over again, it takes reps. Obviously, if you put in one coverage or one play one time and run it one time, like by no means is that a play that you have. So it'll take reps over and over again. So they can do them instinctively without having to overthink on it. And that's what I'm looking for. All right, thanks, Coach. Appreciate All right, it. you guys have a great day. All black. All black.